explain. What's up, y'all? Okay. So I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Forgive me. I had to take a call and run to the little girl's room. But I'm back. So look, I got the audios queued up. I got the audios queued up and we getting ready to get into all these stories, the different, you know, the way it has evolved um, over time. What was actually said? And it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, like a whole lot. Um, so that's that. Also, we got to talk about real quick, child. Y'all friend, the necromancer was trying to play victim on Twitter. Baby, it didn't go well at all. It didn't. And we're going to talk about that too. And anything else that come up. Actually, anything else that come up, we're going to handle that too. Let me greet who's here and then let's get into this gossip really, really quick. Y'all, I made it back here. I made sure I had all my recordings, which was not, you know, I was trying to cut them short because some of them were a little long, but I made sure we got them. And then drank me some more water, try to clean my stomach. You know, I felt like I needed to flush after I ate. And then we ready. And then as soon as I set the live, I had an important call come in. So I had to take it. I didn't have a choice. I was trying to dodge the phone. But I had an important call come in that I could not skip. And then I had to go to the girls' room. So I'm here. Thank y'all for being here. The beautiful Bianca is here, even though she's going to be in the bushes a little bit tonight. But she's still watching. Okay, she's still the eye in the sky. And she is overhead. Happy Tuesday, she says, y'all. She said, get your drinks, take shoes off. Let's get ready to do our thing. Auntie Eva is here. Thank you for being number two. Miss Sparkle is number four. Thank you. This is our resident Mary Kay lady. Sweet Beloved is like number one. All right, all right. Cheryl Thomas Hughes is in the house. My good sis from Miami-Dade County. All right. You say you meant number 16. All right, I got you. Queena is in the house. It's country girl. Queena, we love you, sis. We glad you made it. Leah Aries. All right, all right. Y'all under tornado alert. Girl, you better be careful. You say most of Tennessee. Hey, until two in the morning. Girl, look, I hope you watching this from the bathtub. Don't they tell y'all to wait in the bathtub if the storm is, is overhead? Vita is here from Denver, y'all. She's number eight. Magdalene is number 10. Hey, sis. Y'all make sure y'all like this video, share this video, use your engagement button, bottom right hand side, circle with the emoji, send up those bubbles ASAP, send them up, send them up. Nacho Twins Mama is in the house, all right? We glad you made it. She's asking y'all to hit the like button. Aries son, hey, thank you for being number 13. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Christian Key is number 14. All right, all right. Another one of our beautiful archangels in the chat, keeping it safe so everybody can talk freely and safely. Okay, Cloud Nine is number 14. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You said you in Nashville. It's okay right now. Just stop raining the sun out so hopefully nothing happens. I hope not. I hope not. Because when she said Tennessee, I'm like, the only other person I know up there is Christian. That's a lot. Miss Kaiser, so say, hey, Ladybug, how are you? Hit the like button. Hey, Yolanda Franklin, thank you for being 16. Zoe Brown, hey, well, happy birthday to you. I hope you had a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed your day. All right, Ray Ray all day, number 17. Hey, sis, cool gamer. It's always cool, always in the doggone building, as you know, as you know. All right, act like you know. That's what they say, right? That's what that's that's the little song. Act like you know. So y'all act like you know now. Vintage 1970. Thank you for being 22. I appreciate you. I do. I do. All right. Let's see who else we got in here. I just want to slide on a slide. Black and honest education. Thank you for being like number 26. Y'all, this is our sis that left me that long comment that had me reading when I saw that I had hit the 5k. If it was not for black. And honest education. I don't know what I would have done. I'd have missed everything. I wouldn't have known nothing about it. Hey, Dr. J, 1913. What's up, Miss Carmen San Diego? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where in the world is Dr. J? Where you at today, girl? Where you at today? Thank you for being number 25, boo. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny Patterson is in the house. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
the beautiful, the gorgeous Nisi Rose is in the house. Okay, I don't see y'all sending up no bubbles. I don't understand why we can't get no bubbles. I like the likes. The likes are like uh, the likes are very likable, but I want y'all to hit that engagement button to send bubbles up. It's on the bottom right hand side. It don't cost nothing. Throw them in the air. Thank you for being 26, gorgeous. Delightful by design. Thank you for being 17. You and Ray Ray hit it at the same time. Brown style in the house. Al. Hey, how are you? Okay. Miss Kaiser so say say she number 18. Okay. Let me see who else in here. Because child, we finna listen to this stuff. Mm-hmm. I made it my business to get it queued up. Hello, gorgeous. This is our niece, Couture Bay. Thank you for being number 34. All right, all right. All right. Rochelle is here. Rochelle, thank you for being 32, sis. I appreciate you. Man, he he Ellie L is in here. Hey now, Miriam Saint Fleur is in the house at with number 35. Number 35. Thank you so much. Clyde Jones, what up, cuz? I'm so glad to see you. Monica Jones, you made it. Good to see you. Monica, you and Clyde Cousins, for real. Hey, thank you for being number 17. Thank you, thank you, DS, with your crazy tail. In the house, yes. Dialogue Sisters is here. She's number 40. Yvette, all the way from the UK, is in the house. Vet, do you know them people that took your crown, girl? Did you know they done took your crown? Thank you for being number 44, sis. KK, you made it. Hey, boo. All right, all right. So look, I'm trying to get slide on through everybody. Angela Davis is here. Thank you for being 46. That's what's up. Cause um, child, look, dear lady right here. And listen, y'all, it was hard to listen to all the audio because it was it was like reliving this mess. And something about when you already know what happens, you end up hearing stuff that you didn't hear the first the first time. Mm, excuse me. When you hear it back the second time, you start hearing stuff you didn't even hear. Hey, J Darkness, you running in the grocery store real quick, but I know you coming back, okay? Hey, Brandon Martin, thank you for being 47. She should be put on pause. She should be put on pause, to be honest. She's a disgusting character, but I do want her to be able to pay for them children's education. Y'all know me. I'm a softy when they got kids that need, you know, to eat. Even though I don't like Robert, I don't. I'm not. I'm not excited about her not knowing how she gonna pay for that mortgage. That is not exciting to me. Tandra, for real. Thank you for being 52. What's up? Who else we got up in here? A generous soul. Hey, how are you? Thank you for being like number 60. So listen, Belize and JB is 61. Y'all sliding on in. So, yeah, it was kind of wild. DT, my DT. Oh, thank you. Love you. But, um, yeah, it was rough listening back because that listening back, I'm telling y'all, you, you hear stuff that you didn't hear the first time. You catch stuff that you didn't catch the first time. Duke girl, what's up? Thank you for being number 64. Y'all, I done started that yarn again. It's, that's telling me I probably need to get some more like IV hydration or something. Cause I'm like, what is going on with this yawning? Does y'all know when I was going through that, when they got that IV bag with the hydration and then the yawning stopped. So I'm thinking I probably need to go back. And, uh, hey boo, I think I need to go do another bag of IV hydration. Get myself all the way together. Callie Dream, thank you for being 72. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, D. Saratinas is here. Happy Tuesday. All right, Legina the Jackson is here. Number 38, Lisa Gordon. Girl, where you been? We missed you. Thank you for being number 62. Thanks, Ray Ray. He he L E L. What's up? Carmen San Diego is currently in ATL. She back in the States with us, y'all. This lady be on the run. She on the run like somebody chasing her. She be all over the globe, too. Apple Charm, thank you for being number 70. And thank you for the congratulations. Tamika Gobbo, hey, boo, how you doing? Oh, man, that's way back. Whoa, girl. That mean we, it's, it's, it's real. The bond is real because that's way back, baby. Oh, child. Oh, child. You talking about way back there. 
way back there. Miss Thelma, thank you so much for being number 77. I appreciate it. You know what? Well, I did do a supplement for the vitamin D. I did a supplement for that. Um, and then, you know, they can do, they can like add that to your IV um, bag. So I think I may do that too. You know, because I was, oh, girl, I was severely dehydrated. Severely, severely. Hey, just me, Cheryl. I'm glad you caught it too. Deb, Debbie Garcia, the lady who makes it legal, one of the ladies who makes it legal to talk housewives on this porch. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. Now what you said, no neck looks like a curtain with a whole man juice on it. Whole lot of, whole lot of, like a curtain with a whole lot of man juice. Oh my. Yes, it does. It does. And you know what? I keep my water really, really, really close. That's usually why y'all catch me with water. And I always keep my water so I can just reach and grab it because I do not play about my water at all, especially after dealing with that dehydration. Hey, Brian, what's up? Thank you for being number 79. You listening while you do your homework. Well, I'm going to keep you company. Right, Brandon? That, I didn't even acknowledge that because wow. That's all I can say, honey. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So look, we all in here. Quick housekeeping. Y'all know how it goes. Somebody come in and I miss them. Don't y'all miss them. Make sure we're greeting people and welcoming folks. If this is your first time on a live stream with us over here on the porch with the Royals, make sure you tell us this is your first time live so we can welcome you appropriately. Also, like this video, put your like number in the chat. Y'all know how I play and I don't play fair. So if I ask for a number and I ask who's like number, whatever, and I tell you the minute where we are now and what minute I'm going to be checking back to see who got it. If don't nobody tell me you can't win. You know what I'm saying? If you're going you gonna to win, you got to be done and hit the button. You know what I mean? And you know how sometimes... Two, three people can hit the like button at the same time and get the same number. Don't even panic. It's going to go to the first person who puts it in the chat first. Okay? Fair? Fair. All right. So y'all know if you got a cuss, misspell your cuss words. Keep your comments on the people on the screen, not on each other. If you disagree, do so respectfully. We can agree to disagree respectfully. Tongue and teeth fall out. Ken folks should not. Okay? So we're not going to do that over here. Now let's get into... What I is done heard. And I know my English is bad, okay? <laughs> it's intentional. It's intentional. It's not ignorance. It's foolishness, okay? So let's dig into this thing that we have here. Let's dig in. I have some recordings yeah i do so this is where we're gonna get our audio like i said y'all know we cannot play with bravo because bravo tv does not play they they will snatch your live down right while you talking i mean right while you talking bravo tv plays no games baby let me tell you they will not wait till you finish and strike your video you will be in the middle of talking and that whole stream will get shut down. So we're not going to play with Bravo TV. Amen. All right. We just going to play their audio. <laughs> okay. So we had to go back to where everything started. We had to go back to where everything started. Okay. This is very important. Hey, hello, beautiful people. What's up, boo? All right. All right. All right. So we got to go back to where we started because everything starts somewhere. So we're going back to the origin of the story that Giselle Bryant told on Chris Bassett. Hey, Shani. Yeah, we're going back down memory lane in a big way. But I'm going to tell you what inspired this today, right? So what inspired me to go ahead and just get the audio, let's settle everything once and for all, what was said, who said it, what's the timeline, 
when did things change what did they change to what was added what was taken away hey Catherine Bennett all that was inspired by the necromancer well and the reason i say that is because the necromancer took it on to took it on herself to go on twitter now why she decided to, that she wanted to be on twitter is beyond me your guess is as good as mine I, I can't imagine she don't even really have enough fans to be on twitter it's like when she posted on twitter child it's like it's almost painful to watch it's almost painful to watch because people do not spare this girl. They don't spare her at all. And I mean at all. Okay? Yes, girl, with the misspellings, y'all saw I posted it on the community tab. This heifer couldn't spell ostracize and didn't know how to use it in a sentence. Because I seriously doubt that she meant that Wendy ostracized her. She can't ostracize you from a group that is trying that is actively trying to ostracize her like that's not how that works it's not how that works at all okay yeah i don't think she knew how it how how to use it or how to spell it i'm more and more more and more questioning who took the boards for you i'm questioning it but this is what she posted. Hey, Nikita, thank you for being like number 88, sis. All right. Vet says she stays strong and wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely lacks intelligence. That's why Giselle and, and Robert like her. You know, they like dumb people. You know, they struggle to keep up with intelligent sisters. They struggle heavily, heavily. We're not even going to talk about that picture. Child, I'm wondering if she's really an attorney. Because she says she was, does some kind of fintech. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming with some fintech bank is what she was saying, but which is why it was so funny to me that she jumps in to give her opinion on civil jargon about civil law or criminal law concerning S assault and all that. Like, girl, that's not even the type of law you practice, girl. Like anybody could have answered that question. And then Mia jumped in and girl, where did you go to school at? Any like, did you go to school anywhere? I'm just saying, prognosis, my beauty. Thank you for being number 89. Yes, so she spoke on this, took it on herself to say, I absolutely see both sides, but the ladies in question also need to see each other's point of view. That's the only understanding. Can, that's that's the only understanding can be reached so apparently this um functional literate heifer can barely put a sentence together she then goes on to say i don't believe what happened was workplace harassment either you have to look at all the facts and the totality of the circumstances of what giselle said occurred so i'm sitting here like girl first of all shut up you say stripper school maybe maybe it's possible it's not just wrong it's just she didn't put a sentence together like there's pieces missing we don't know what you're trying to say you've left out complete words right huh i'm like and what and on what planet is that a word well, well on what planet is that a sentence she says that's the only understanding can be reached that is her sentence that's the only understanding can be reached is she saying that's the only understanding that can be reached? That's the only way understanding can be reached? Like, what are you saying? There's things that are missing, right? But we're supposed to believe that somehow you pass the bar on your own. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, silly, silly mongoose. So anyway, I was like, you know what? Let's settle this once and for all. Let's settle it once and for all. Let's get down to the nitty and yes, the gritty. And, and, and just listen to what was said because we watched Giselle in part one of the RHOP reunion get, get convenient amnesia or as I like to call it, amnegro. You know, when you conveniently forget what you'd like to forget. See, amnesia is an actual diagnosis, but amnegro 
It's just when you are full of crap, Negro, that's all that is. <laughs> yeah, she said somebody contaminated her. Let me read it for you. DT ain't going to let me live. DT ain't going to let me live. Yes, yeah, she said that too. Um, I'm going to read all of those um, when we get to her playing the victim. We got some other audio that we got to listen to. Yes, she, she said that Wendy contaminated her to the group. This girl is so ignorant. Like, I just cannot. I cannot. The life will say she must have taken some of those pills when she wrote that. Oh, my God. I told y'all my sister on the phone be saying that lady was popping pills and taking a 40 and almost took me out with that. And now here you go saying she must have had some of them pills when she wrote that. Lord have mercy. Y'all, please hit the like button. Continue to hit the like button, please. Okay, so let's get into what we have on the matter, what we actually have. Let's start with where it started, okay? Just to give you a little bit. <laughs> oh. Listen, DT, I don't know. I don't know. They might be running a whole scam, huh, and they man. French 91 said it would make my year if Chris and Candace get a divorce and Chris sues Giselle and Bravo production pull a crusty Michael on them. Girl, girl. Listen, I wouldn't be mad. Now, yeah, that's what she said. Say she'd be popping pills and drinking a 40. Okay. That's what she said. I didn't say that. I'm not saying that I'm above saying something like that. I'm simply saying that she said that and I did not. Say so she probably slept her way to graduation. Well, who? Who was going to compensate her for that? Have you seen her? I'm going to stop. J Darkness say, P.I. paralegal here. I can't or cannot stress how vital writing is for an attorney. Heck, the legal files. Oh, I guess you were saying also. You probably doing talk to text. You know, talk to text will mess y'all up. Patricia Joaquin, Miss Tampa, Florida is number 94. Thank you so much. So listen, let's get into it. Yes, Auntie Eva, have you seen her? <laughs> Tell me, have you seen her? Because <laughs> who compensating her for that? So let's start where it started. Just to give you a little background before we listen to the audio. Before we listen to the audio. Um... Y'all friend, uh, y'all friends, neck and shoulders, Giselle and Robert sat down to have a conversation, and this is where the bull crap started. Okay, this is where it started. Let me make sure the sound is all the way up because I want y'all to get the full situation. I know, thank you for being 97. Oh, that's it. So last night, I get this damn from Chris. At 2.42, he writes, you should have came to the W. After the party? Yeah. Who are you at the W with? Not your wife. You know he's the general manager at the rooftop. Oh, he is? Yes. The issue mainly is that I know Candace wasn't there. Okay, I feel like if he DM'd me that, I wouldn't think it was suspect. So this was just an invitation at 2.42 in the morning? <sighs> I, I definitely think I should tell her. I feel like Chris is just friendly. So I was able to talk to her and be like, I don't really see anything wrong with it. It's not like he was like sliding in her DMs. He slid. Oh, he did it. He slid. Okay, well, you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. Gross. I am. So we, we got to deal with semantics here, right? Let's not make this seem like Chris reached out to Ashley on his own and said, hey, girl, what you doing? It's 2.30 in the morning. Come visit me at the W. That didn't happen. No. Chris responded to your Instagram story. Chris reaching out to Ashley. While I can see where some people might think it's weird, I just have always looked at Chris as someone who really cares about his wife, who really wants to, like, cultivate friendship. Whether Chris went out of his way to send me a specific DM or was just casually responding to one of my Instagram stories. It's something that feels off. You know, Chris slides into my DMs too. 
innocent. It's very innocent. Yeah, we come here today. It's not a comfortable thing for me. Yeah. But I just let it ride. But why is it not comfortable for you? Let's pause right there. You heard her, right? He slides in my DMs too. And Robert was like, but it's innocent. Yeah. But it makes me uncomfortable. Now, this is where this, this is where the stuff started. I want y'all to get the whole story. This is for the people who keep trying to say all she said was he made her uncomfortable. That is not all she said. She had a lot to say. So I just paused it because I wanted y'all to hear. Well, he slid in my DM too. It make me uncomfortable. If he ain't saying nothing to you, what you uncomfortable about? About him speaking to you? Girl, about you should have been uncomfortable when Uncle Ray told you that you getting old and you ain't going to be cute long and you need to get you a man. But that's when you should have been uncomfortable because he was up there prophesying and telling you the truth about yourself. Because as we speak, you you aging like a bruised banana. You looking like an overripe plantain. Now, now, now. That's when you should have been comfortable. That's when you should have been uncomfortable. Because Uncle Ray was speaking something over your life. Okay. Hey, Lady T, thank you for being like 100. All right, all right. So I'm, I'm gonna let it play. Let's go. We've been to their house. He's cooked dinner for us. Like, why does anyone think that he's like overstepping a boundary? Because I didn't like what he did to me at the reunion. Why are you upset exactly? The line of questioning in the way. Listen, y'all heard her right. I didn't like what he did to me at the reunion. So we gonna, at this point, nobody should come at least in here and say all he said was he made her uncomfortable what the hell did he do to you she literally just said he sl he slides in my dms and i don't like what he did to me what the hell did he do to you okay now what y'all are about to hear is this um this um incident at the reunion i ran it back some because i don't want to miss nothing um where she she was eavesdropping on Chris and Candace talking, and you you get to hear her asking him, are you mad? And him saying, I'll tell you later. So this is the reason why he was speaking to her in the first place. It's because she was getting in a married couple's personal conversation. So let's just listen. Why are you upset exactly? The line of questioning in the way it was wrong. I didn't like that. Well, I appreciate it. You're mad? Let's talk about it later. That's when we heard Giselle say, you mad? He said, we'll talk about it later. So he was basically telling her, we'll talk about it later. So and this man went and said, well, can I talk to you? It was based on you getting into a married couple's private conversation because he was not comfortable with the way Onika Mirage was questioning and low-key belittling and trying to embarrass Candace for wanting a music career. But we know how she act. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying nothing, but we know how she act. Chris didn't like it. And so he was talking to his wife about it. And Giselle interjected and said, are you mad? And he responded, I'll tell you about it later. Or I'll talk to you about it later. Let's keep listening. I noticed he was waiting for me. And he says to me, can I talk to you in your room? Now listen carefully. Let me get my let me get my my goddamn tablet. Cause we gonna take notes together. Who got who got their tablets? By now, all y'all should have a tablet. Get your tablet, cause I'm getting mad. Okay. So at this stage in the game, what have we heard? We heard her say this is the first time that she brings this to the conversation to the show. Priscilla Clemens, thank you for being like number ninety one. So she said he slid in her DMs. Robert said, "In it was is is innocent. Is nothing to it, right?" She says it makes yeah, but it makes me uncomfortable. That's what she said. We just listened to her. Now, the next thing we heard, give me shelter. Thank you for being like number 105. Yes, Nisi grabbed her royal family clipboard, honey. Get your clipboard, get your notepad, get your, if you got a galaxy note, get your stylus pen, whatever you need to do. Let's get these notes. Dana Cutler, thank you for being 106. Ian, thank you for being 108, nephew. We then heard during the reunion, make your note, reunion, 
we heard Chris and Candace speaking privately. We heard Giselle try to interject. Happy to be happy. Thank you for being 110. We heard Chris say, I'll talk to you later. And then we hear her telling Robert, he was waiting on me and said, can I talk to you in your room? Be, pay attention because this story is going to change. He was waiting on me. Okay. Now let's get back into it. Let me see if I can run it back because I don't want to miss nothing. Because I assumed my glam was there. I walk in the room and I realize they're not there. Hmm. To me, can I talk to you in your room? Okay, no problem because I assumed my glam was there. I walk in the room and I realize they're not there. So did anything happen? No. Right. So did y'all have a conversation? Like, what did he? He was, I mean, to be honest with you, Robin, it was late. He was talking about Candace, something, something, Candace. I think he was complaining about Candace. Okay. I know y'all mad at me. Y'all, I hope y'all don't get mad at me for stopping. Thank you for being 111, Cheryl. But this is important. This is important and it's unfortunate. But this is the stuff that you have to do when you're dealing with a liar. When you're dealing with a habitual liar, this is the type of stuff you have to do. So she said she assumed her glam was there. She said, Robert asked her, did they talk? She said, it was late. And I put that in quotation marks because she's making, she's making an assertion. She's asserting that it was late. So she really wasn't paying attention. She said, he said something, something Candace. Right? Y'all heard her, right? She said, he said something, something Candace. And then she says, I think he was complaining about her. Why would he be complaining about Candace? He was just on the stage upset because he felt like y'all and Onika was picking on Candace. Now that's what happened. Hey, Carrie Amoneke, thank you for being 112, sis. Okay? So I think he was complaining. Mind you, Two seconds prior, not even seconds, two statements prior, she claimed it was late. She don't really know what he said. He said something, something, Candace. And that quick, it turned to, I think he was complaining about her. Y'all heard that, right? Okay. Okay, let's keep going. I don't even know. But all I, knew was I don't even know. This is not good for me. And he was, he was probably drunk. He was very drunk. That makes it even worse. That he was very drunk. I don't want to be in a close room with a married man. I am a woman who had a husband cheat on her. I don't want to be put in the optics of cheating. I don't have anything to do with it. Chris made me feel completely uncomfortable. To the point where I told you after it happened, you were like, oh, Giselle, whatever. I was already aware of what took place. He didn't say anything inappropriate. He didn't touch her. He literally just asked to have a private conversation. I see nothing wrong with that. Many a married man have tried me, and I felt like it was a situation in which he was trying to see if I was with it. Many a married man has tried me. And she felt like he was trying to see if she was with it. Okay, let's let her talk. You said he was talking about Candace. Maybe he just wanted to talk to so about his wife. In so he was letting me know he's not happy. Okay, maybe I was supposed to say, oh, I can make you happy. Like, get out of here. He's a sneaky link. Okay, so that's the first conversation. 
that is the first conversation. So we got a lot out of this one. Um, th at this point, Emma Crawford, thank you for being 121. At this point, nobody should ever in their lives, in their lives, I should hear no one else in their life say, all, G all Giselle said was he made her uncomfortable. That is not what Giselle said. Giselle said, and we just listened to her own, in her own words, out of her own mouth. He slid in my DM. Robert said it was innocent. Yeah, but it made me uncomfortable. She jumped in their conversation. He offered to talk to her about it later rather than letting her bust in on him and his wife's conversation about them picking on her. Okay. Then she said he was waiting on me and said, can I talk in your room? She claimed she assumed her glam was in there. Robert asked, did, well, did y'all talk? What did he say? She says, well, it was late. Something, something, Candace. I think he was complaining about Candace, but I don't even know. He was very drunk. I didn't want to put in, be put in the optics of cheating. I've had a cheating husband. Then she said, many a married man has tried me. He wanted to see if I was with it. He's a sneaky link. How you get all of this after saying you don't even know what he said? This according to you. You don't even know what he said. This is what you said. But now all of a sudden, you done got all of this out of it. That you know when a man trying to see what you with it and he trying to see if you was with it and he's a sneaky link. Girl, did you forget that you just got through saying? You literally just got through saying? You don't know what he said? Something, something, Candace? And that turned into, you know when a man trying to see when you with it? Giselle, you a liar. But that's okay. Because today we got audio and we got time. All right, so here's the next instance where this conversation continued to go on. I'm going to get a new sheet of paper, and I hope y'all do too, because we're going to keep it. Let me put a one and circle it, because that's the first one. Now, when we come in here and I do these reviews, just so y'all know, this is what your sister does, okay? Your good sis will sit down with the pen and the pad, and this is what I do. This is why when I tell y'all, I know what you said. Oh, I know what you said. Let me put a two and circle it. And let's listen to the next one, ladies. Let's listen to the next one. Hold on. Listen, first, Chris is sliding into Ash's DMs. And then what happened at the reunion did not make you feel good. Does Candace need to know this? Yes, that is her husband. What did I do? You didn't do anything. Yes. Listen out. Listen. Listen. Okay. If Chris is making women feel uncomfortable, Candace needs to know. She needs to nip this in the bud. Because if he's doing things that are making people feel uncomfortable and no one says anything to him, he's going to continue to do it. So, um, wanted to talk to you really quickly. Yes. Um, in light of Chris at Dean Ashley and um, there was a situation in which Chris made me feel completely uncomfortable and I feel like at this point I should tell you what happened. So we were at the reunion. We're in the hallway, we're talking and he was like, hey, can I talk to you in your room? And so I was like, cool. Because my glam's in my room, no big deal. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. I get to my room, my glam is gone. And I immediately felt like I don't want to be in this situation. So did he do something? Did he say something? No. Right. He didn't. He wouldn't do that. Yeah. No. He okay. Did not. So and what happened? To be honest with you, Candace, it was very late. It was a long day. I don't remember like exactly what he said, but I can tell you, I don't ever want to be in a bedroom right. with a married man. Yeah. So the next day, I tell Cal. Cal was like, I don't like it because he knew I was gone. Because he said goodbye to me before I left. So let's stop right there. We got her again, this time talking to Candace. Hey, Ashley, thank you, Buki. Thank you for being like 123. So this time we get her saying, it was late. I don't remember what he said. We get her saying, I. she immediately felt like she didn't want to be in that situation. Then she said she talked to Cal and Cal said 
that he spoke to him so he knew he was leaving. Okay. Now that's what's being said. So let's just listen to this story change up. Let's listen. So this is a this is a thing we're doing. Chris is being attacked. That's no, what we're doing. Chris Chris thinks of you and Robin and Ashley as friends. You walk into you. our home. Chris has cooked for you. Right. Chris really looks at you all like sisters. But you want to say that the man who would lay his coat over a puddle for you to walk over, I don't, who would cook you a meal, who would pour you a drink, who would be there for you, whatever you would need, you want to say that my husband made you feel uncomfortable. 100%. Got it. Candace, I get it. Like, that's your husband, but you cannot just diminish how I felt. But I'm just telling you, what is, what are we doing? What is this? I'm just telling you how it made me feel. Uh-huh. Um, where's Eric? And I that is Eric. when Candace exited stage left. She she decided to exit stage left, and she said, "Where is Eric?" Tracy Lashley, thank you for being like number one twenty six. Now Catherine Bennett says she was about to whoop her butt live in living color. She act like she wanted to. Yes, Cal is always her backup, but I think we got a sound bite of Cal later. Saying something a little different than what Giselle claimed he said. Hey, born to be wild. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's keep listening. Let's keep listening. See, this is why I love proof and audio and notes and all that stuff. Because, baby, when we play my favorite game of who's the liar, oh, darling, liars always get caught. So let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. I said, Giselle, can we talk? She said, yeah, let's go to my room. So she suggested going to your room. Uh, 99% sure that that's how that went down. So he comes up to me. He's like, so let's pause it. Now we got Giselle talking to Karen. And then just so y'all know what you're hearing, Chris is talking to Candace. The way he remembers it, he said, can we talk? And she said, we can talk in the room. Now, I'm going to tell you, I believe Chris on this one. I'm going to tell you why. Not just because Giselle is just a big liar, because she is. But that's not the only reason. Just because somebody's a liar don't mean they're lying all the time, right? But the reason why I believe him over her is because, one, we heard, we just listened to the reason for the conversation was her trying to butt in on him and Candace's conversation on that reunion stage. That's one. Two, two, according to her, she said at this point at least twice, possibly three times, I want to say twice, I have to check the notes, that she thought her glam was in the room. So it would make sense that she would say, oh yeah, let's talk in here because I know my glam is in here. So if you ask me, hey, God's anointed daughter, I believe his rendition of stuff. He says, she said, we could talk in here, okay? She said, he said, he said, she said, okay? It don't matter who suggested it, y'all was gonna talk where you could tell her what was going on and how you felt about what they did to Candace on that stage with Onika, Nikki Mirage, okay? That's what the whole conversation was about. That's why she conveniently keeps saying, I don't remember. I don't really know what he said, but he made me uncomfortable. Now, remember the first conversation. She didn't know what he said, but I know when somebody's trying to get at me to see if I'm with it and he was trying to see and he's a sneaky link and he was telling me about he complaining about his wife after directly after saying she doesn't even know what he said. She doesn't even remember. She said something, something, Candace. That's what she said. Hey, Lex, Lex, say, I'm glad you're breaking this down because a lot of people are forgetting all the stuff Giselle said. Girl, you know I'm happy to do it. Welcome. Is this your first time? Y'all, if you new here, please put FTL for first time live. And I am going to make sure we all welcome you appropriately. You are so lovely. You are welcome. Please don't let this be your last time. Okay. So now let me let them keep talking. I just want to put it in context. Let's go. Can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. He said, well, can we go to your room? Mm -hmm. Your room. My room. Okay. So I opened the door and I realized my glam had left. So there was nobody in there. Right. So I just suggested leave the door open. I don't need anybody, you know, suggesting anything else. Right. You know, happen. she was like, yeah, I don't need any rumors like that going on about me either. I'm uncomfortable. I'm in a hotel room with a married man, mm -hmm. and it is his word against mine as to what's happening in this room. How would go from conversation in the room to his word against yours? You and Chris are friends. 
Me, Chris, or Frank? He touched you? He did not touch me. He, he, he did not say, made you feel like he, he, the fact that it was happening. What I do remember was saying to myself, I don't feel good and I want him to leave. And I said, him. I said, can okay. you see if they're ready for me to come back or whatever? Did he do it? He immediately left. There we go. Maybe, you know, she was uncomfortable, but I know that I've never been anything but nice to her. Okay. So in this conversation, we get her saying, she repeated the, he said, can we talk? Then she said, can we, he said, can we go to your room? I want y'all to recall from the first conversation, what she said was, he said, can we talk in your room? I know y'all probably going to be like, Nitra, you splitting hairs, but I'm not. There's a, there is a method to why I'm taking y'all down the road like this, because words mean things. It's very different from. Hey, can we go? Can we go in your in your hotel room and talk quietly? To can we talk? Oh, can we go in here? It's giving. He said, "Can we talk?" And you said, "We can talk in here." Because according to you, you thought your glam squad was in there. I'm just saying. Now, Brandon, what you say, boo? Before we listen to the next one, because you know it's coming. Say, interesting that Giselle has never disclosed exactly what Chris said or did that made her feel uncomfortable, because she can't make up nothing. She can't make up nothing. Hey, Shanna. Shanna say exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hello, beautiful people. Say Chris did an interview that said Giselle, Ashley, and some producers were setting him up. He didn't lie. I know we heard him with Bravo Brothers, them two um, clear boys on YouTube. Bravo Bros, I think is what they call it or whatever. And, and you know, I believe everything he said. And I, and, and I feel bad that I'm having to defend the likes of Chris Bassett because y'all know I don't like him. Y'all know that. Y'all know I don't like unemployed men. You know this. They make me itch. You ain't see me digging in my scrap, scrap right now. Just, you know, but they making me defend this man because, you know, we lying and stuff. So let's go to the next recording. Let's go. Yeah, so I wasn't going to interject in that. Mm -hmm. The last time that we spoke, I had to get up. So this is Candace and Giselle talking outside of the winery. Now, I don't know if y'all recall. I don't know if y'all recall, but Wendy had invited them to a winery to have a burn session where they were supposed to air out their grievances with each other, go around the room. When you get to each person, give everybody a chance to air, air it out, good, bad, or indifferent or whatever. And, um, Lord, Ian, Ian you, you tough today. Um, and so after that, after that kind of was, you know, just blown to smithereens by neck and shoulders, Jizz and Robert, what you call them, um, they they being Candace and Giselle decided to have a private tete-a-tete -tete on the patio. Okay. On the patio area. All right. So let's go, let's go. And Ian say, okay, I need to be more focused on finding the Giselle a weed that don't sit like it was scorched in the oven. Child, y'all rough around here. Y'all rough. So let's, let's go. Right. But I wanted to make sure that I was clear on understanding your feelings and where you are. You mentioned that you all went into your dressing room, you and Mike and Chris, yeah. and you were uncomfortable. Right, correct. So what exactly made you uncomfortable? I'm in a room mm -hmm. with a man that does not belong to me. Right. And mm -hmm. the door is closed. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I asked him to go outside and he immediately did. That's it. And I thought you should know. So you're saying that he suggested that you all go talk in your room yes because he said that he asked you to talk and you suggested that you go no. to your room i said giselle can we talk and she said yeah let's go to my room so she suggested going to your room 99 percent sure that that's how that went down and when you got into the room he said should we leave the door open there was nobody in there right so I even suggested leave the door open. I don't think anybody, you know, suggesting anything else, right. you know, happened. She was like, yeah, I don't need any rumors like that going on about me either. I don't recall, recall him saying, uh -huh. if he said that, then he knew this was inappropriate. That there implies some sort of malintent for you to say, well, Chris knew that no one was in the room and he still lured me i didn't say lord if that's the intent i didn't say that he word. lured me yeah. into the room to talk to me do you believe that he had malintent i don't know candace it is as simple as 
I do not want to be in a room with a married man. Chris is maybe doing things that he feels comfortable with, but the ladies don't. Ashley says that at the spring party that Chris came on to someone else. Okay, cool. So what did she, was she specific? No, she wasn't. Okay, so let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Since since everybody want to get M Negro and tell ridiculous lies and pretend we don't remember what happened. And I'm talking about fans and all because I'm tired of hearing people say, oh, it was just about how she felt. She was just saying how she felt. And she was just telling people how she felt. No, ma'am, no, no, ma'am, no, Pam, no ham, no turkey. This heifer did some lying and some fancy lying too. Ian say, yeah, I forgot the tragedy on Ashley head too. Lord, y'all talking about these people wigs. We, I thought we stopped beefing with wigs after big Reese wigs last year. Yolanda say, Cal need to hook Ashley up with a better wig. As oh Lord, why Cal added he should find. Oh. Why do I feel like we need drive-by lace fronts or something? Why? Right. She said, I don't know, Candace. Right. So listen, they asked, Giselle just be lying. She just be lying. So let's talk about in this recording what we heard. What we heard. Tiger Oracle, thank you for being 136. So we heard her say to, to Candace, I, I, I was in a room with a man that does not belong to me. That's what made her uncomfortable. Then she says that I asked him to go outside and he left immediately. I was in a room with somebody that wasn't mine. And when I said go outside, he left immediately. So was he like, let's really say like in this conversation, this is what she outlined took place. I was in a room with somebody who, with a man who did not belong to me. And when I asked him to go outside, he went immediately. So which part made you uncomfortable that he asked to talk to you after you tried to get in their conversation and he told you on the stage he would talk to you later? Is that what made you uncomfortable? Was it the fact that according to you, this is a room you were comfortable going in because you thought your glam was there. How was he supposed to know why you were comfortable going in that room? Even if you told him, oh, my glam should be there, but you never once claimed that you told him that. So once he got there and nobody was there, and if that made you uncomfortable, ooh, he's a man. This is a room. He ain't mine. Why did you not step immediately back out of the room? Like, dang, we can't talk in here. What happened? Hey, Shalon. What made you uncomfortable? Because you said you told him to go outside and he went immediately. So what made you uncomfortable? Are you uncomfortable because he left immediately? Is that why you're uncomfortable, Giselle? Did you want that? Did you want that young that younger man to knock the fleas off Fluffy? Is that why you were uncomfortable, ma'am? Tiger Eye Oracle, welcome to the royal family. I need y'all to spam the chat with welcome to the royal family. And I ain't joking. If I don't see y'all spam the chat with welcome, we shutting this sucker down. Okay, so Tiger Eye Oracle, welcome officially to the Royal Family. Please make sure that you inbox me at Shanitra underscore Royal or email me, email me at Shanitra at Phil's daughter dot com. Make sure I have your birthday and your cash app because all Royal Family members, we celebrate birthdays over here and we do little, you know, special gossiping events and different things like that and different virtual events. And we want you to be a part of it. Okay, that's all I'm saying. All right. Yes. So that's right. I want to see welcome in the chat. And I mean spam. I ain't playing. Yeah, he she act like she wanted him to knock the fleas off Fluffy. And he didn't offer to do it when she said, can you see if they ready for us to come out? And he left immediately like lightning. That's what made her uncomfortable. Were you uncomfortable because he didn't show even a smidgen of interest in you? Is that it? Queen of Hearts KS, hello. Ian say, maybe Giselle is uncomfortable because he didn't hit on her the way she hopes so it made her feel like she losing her mojo, baby. That mojo been dropped by the side of the road long time ago. And I mean long time ago, baby. If she ever had any mojo. It went bad in the summer of 87. That's when it went bad. So we got another piece of audio that we got to dig to. A Vixen Forever is in the chat. I know that's right. Thank y'all for welcoming our new sister, Tiger Eye Oracle. Queen of Hearts KS. We so glad to see you. Okay, God's anointed daughter say not knock the fleas off fluffy sis. You need a time out. I'm just saying that's how she act. She literally did we not just hear her tell this girl or do I need to play it again? Because she told her I'm in a room with a man that don't belong to me. I said, can you go outside? And he left immediately. Which part made you uncomfortable? 
Like, what are we exactly accusing this young man of doing? Why I need a timeout and she the one can't quit lying? I need a timeout. Boy, I tell you, discrimination right here. Discrimination. Y'all doing me like this because I'm black. I already know. Free me. Free Nitra. <laughs> Free Nitra. Free me. Say, Chris don't want them fleas at all. At all. They bite, honey. They bite. Shanna say she didn't trust herself. And I, I believe that. Cheryl Cooper sent me a cash app with a picture. She said, congratulations on my 5K. Thank you so much, Cheryl. That is sweet. You sent a heart back. Thank you for the picture. I love the pictures. They are everything. They are absolutely everything. So, yeah, it, it looks like she didn't trust herself. Nisa say she was fiending. Lord, not she wanted to play with that man Pickle. Not not play with the Pickle. That's just nasty. Let the, let the mayonnaise mayonnaise out. Lord, have mercy. So, look, let's listen to the next one. Because that's what she said to Giselle. We heard her. This is what she said. I want y'all to pay attention to how this story changed. Because when it changes again, we're definitely going to address it. When it changes again, we're addressing it. Okay? I just want to be clear. Moving right along. All right. I don't think this one got nothing on it. This one ain't a good one. Mm -mm, that ain't the one. Let's get this one yeah more audio more audio so this is her at the same winery after she finishes talking to after she finishes talking to candace she then goes to get on the sprinter to repeat what ashley claimed that the ugly girl said about chris but she adds even more to it. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Tracy. She's adding even more to it. But this is the same lady who would have us believe that, no, I didn't do it. I only said he made me uncomfortable. I never accused him of sexual assault. Excuse me for saying the words. S8. But listen to what she says after she finishes talking to Candace, what she goes and does. Proposition her at the bar, was feeling her butt. Yes, extreme Let's just be clear. The one proposition her at the bar and was feeling her butt. Okay. This is at on the sprinter while retelling Ashley's. Ugly friend story. Y'all, this is just how I make my notes, okay? So she's on the sprinter retelling Ashley's ugly friend story. And listen to what she says one more time. Proposition her at the bar. And was feeling her butt. I'm just saying. Hey, Tay. Thank you. Yeah. This is the fifth audio. And we got more. So let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. We got time, right? We got time, right, y'all? I sure hope so. Let's keep going. Now, this is what was said at last year's reunion. Mm? You are a grown woman. You have no problem using your mouth. You use it very right. well. Chris, can I just stop you there? No, I'm not okay. done. Okay. You had your time. This him talking. Time. It's my turn. I haven't had these opportunities. Right. In but I'm listen to her, too. Way. When we got to your room yeah. and you go in there, you said, I only said yes because I thought my team was in there. When you open the door and your team was not in there, why didn't you just say, hey, nobody's in here. I thought they were in here. We can have this conversation later or in the hallway. That's number one. Uh -huh. Number two, you say to Karen, he needs to apologize for what he did. Emphasis on did. What did I do? That's all I want to know. Okay. What did I do? Okay. Um, that evening, you said.
said to me, Chris, hey, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure. And you said, I want y'all to stop right there. This is very important because at the end of the day, he asked a valid question. And I want y'all to pay very close attention to the fact that Giselle never answered that question. I want y'all to pay very close attention. He said, yeah, production does nothing about the lies. Nothing at all. I want y'all to pay, pay very close attention. Please hit the like button. Please put your like number in the chat. He says, you said that you only said yes because you thought your glam was in there. Once you saw they were not in there, why would you not say, we'll talk later or we can talk in the hallway? When he asked that question, she never answered the question. I'm going to go back and let you hear it again because I'm not making this up. She never answered. Yes, you are a grown woman. You have no problem using your mouth. You use it very right. well. Chris, can I just stop you No, I'm not okay. done. Okay. You had your time. You've done your interviews. It's my turn. I haven't had these opportunities. Right and I'm going to take wait. it now. I will wait. When we got to your room yeah. and you go in there, you said, I only said yes because I thought my team was in there. When you opened the door and your team was not in there, why didn't you just say, hey, nobody's in here. I thought they were in here. We can have this conversation later or in the hallway. That's number one. Uh -huh. Number two, you say to Karen, he needs to apologize for what he did. Emphasis on did. What did I do? That's all I want to know. Okay. What did I do? Okay. Um, that evening, you said to me, Chris, hey, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure. And you said, can we talk? Notice, she ain't told her boy what he did. She, she goes back to run through this whole rehearsed story in her head that he said, can we talk? And I said, sure. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. And then you said, well, can we go to your room? And I said, fine. Now, you told your wife that I asked you to go to my room, and that's not true, Chris. Why are you upset exactly? The line of questioning and the way it was going. I didn't like it. Well, I appreciate it. You're mad? We'll talk about later. I didn't even ask to go to her room. I said, Giselle, can we talk? And she said, yeah, let's go to my room. You said it to her on camera. That's not true at all. And again, we can agree to disagree right there. Whatever it is, you feel how you feel. I'm not discounting your feelings. You still have not told me what I'm, I did. I'm getting there. Well, let's go. Okay. Uh, uh, You've okay. had 10 months. Uh, no, no. I've suffered no, this for 10 I'm months. Waiting for losing you to... clients, okay. losing money, answering to my children, answering to my family. Chris, I'll let you talk. So spit it out. So, okay, so we're not going to talk if you can just be cussing at me because that's not cool what at all. Uh, what's not having cool to is your gutter all. snipe bitch ass lying on my family. Forgot about that part. Candace got a little raw, didn't she? She got a little raw. Yes, Lord, she did. Cussing at me, because that's not cool at all. Uh, what does that have cool to do with your gutter snipe bitch ass lying on my family? I haven't lied on so, your husband. So, so, okay, so, so, tell him what he did. did tell so, him what he did. So, once we were in the room, we were talking, I felt like you had had a lot to drink. And I felt immediately uncomfortable, Chris. That's fair. Okay. And that's what you did. But you put us in that situation. Because the next day when I talked to Cal about it. I did say bye to Chris. And, you know, Chris said, you know, bye, Cal. Right. So I think for you to feel that uncomfortable about it, that was a major issue for me. He said you very well. Listen. Let's listen to what Cal said. Cal said, let, let's go back and, and listen again. Let's just play it back. Can I get to Cal? Okay, here we go. Listen to Cal real hard. And, and I, your team? Uh, Carly had been gone. How the do I know that? Listen to Cal, y'all. I did say bye to Chris, and, you know, Chris said, you know, bye, Cal. Right. So I think for you to feel that uncomfortable about it, that was a major issue. He said, I said bye to Chris. He said bye, Cal. And for you to feel that uncomfortable, that's a major issue. Now, we heard her say that Cal said that, you know, he knew that, that the room was empty because he said bye. But we didn't hear, I didn't hear Cal say that. That was actual footage of Cal. Did y'all hear that? Because I didn't. 
Right. Feelings are not facts. Shout out to Couture Bay because my niece be saying that. Feelings are not facts. They are not. I believe she did. She says she didn't, but she, he says she did. And I'm sorry, I believe him because she the one we keep catching lying. And the story he telling makes more sense. It's more cohesive. Talking about he put us in a situation. What situation? Talking? And him running off from you? What situation was, was y'all in? She was raised in the suburbs, but the shade goes seventh ward hard. Oh, talking about um that darn Candace. Yes, this is the girl. Okay, this is the girl with all the coins because she coined that phrase that if, feelings ain't facts. Feelings are not facts. She said it after thinking every one of her lives, honey. But yeah, he said for her to be, for her to feel that uncomfortable is a major issue. I'm going to let him say it again because I want you to hear what Cal says and then I want you to hear what Giselle claims that Cal said. Okay, give me shelter, baby. If you figure it out, please tell us because if you ask me who I go ask now, who will I ask? I'm only, I'm, I'm just saying. Hmm? Let me run Kale a little segment back. I did say by the Chris and, you know, Chris said, you know, by Cal. Right. So I think for you to feel that uncomfortable about it, that was a major issue for me. He said you very well knew he was gone. And she did I your team? She said, Giselle said, Cal said that you very well knew that that he was gone. We didn't hear Cal say that. Chris asked another valid question. Is Cal the only member of your team? And she's talking about some other person. That person been gone. How the hell was he supposed to know that? How did he know that your comfortability on a conversation depended on the glam team that he was not aware of? And even if he saw Cal leave, and even if you said, well, my glam team, if he saw Cam, Cal leave, does that mean that the entire glam team was gone? I'm just saying. So what did I do? I felt like that situation of me being uncomfortable, you participated in. Okay, because you said and yes, we can talk. Did. It sounds like that's how he made you feel. And that's what I said. But over not over what he did. I thought I was going to hear from Candace. Mm -hmm. To be like, you know what, I talked to him and he said he's sorry. But what he did to me made me feel completely uncomfortable. Okay. Those are different but, but, words. What am I, oh, it's different because if you say he needs to apologize for what he did, that's different for he needs to apologize for how he made me feel. Because okay, he didn't we actually sat there and you said do anything besides like be in the situation. Room. 100%. I am a woman who had a husband cheat on her. I don't want to be put in the optics of cheating. I don't have anything to do with it. Which is fair, but the door was no, open. No, it was not the open, door was Chris. Open. Just it was not open. You're laid on the bed in your robe. No, I did not have my robe on. Robe on. I was your fully dress. dressed. With your robe on under it. That's not true. So then she starts arguing over details. This man said you had your robe over the top of your dress. I believe that because we've seen them ladies do that at them reunions backstage, put a robe over their dress. I guess we trying to protect it from food, makeup, whatever like that. But now she want to say I was fully dressed. He didn't say you were naked, baby. He said you had a robe over your dress. And the fact that you're trying to argue a point that this man never said, it makes you look even more guilty. But let's keep going because she said more. This is from this season. If I can get this one to play. This is from this season. For my mental space and for the safety of me and my children. So this is during that trip on this long, long 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 season where she had, this is after she had told the big lie to Karen that she's getting death threats and I still hold it that's a lie and seven sacks of bull crap and how dare you accuse black women of 
threatening to harm you or your children. Girl, most of us wouldn't touch you with the hand of God. Nobody wants to have to scratch in the morning. You flea bitten hussy. Nobody wants to scratch in the morning. None of us want to get ringworm. None of us want to catch pink, catch pink eye. Nobody. How dare you? Because that's exactly who you're lying on. There's no way in the world that you're going to convince us that you thought that you were implying that random clear people were, were planning or threatening to harm you or because, because of colorism. Because when since when do they care about colorism? You definitely were not saying that you believe that it was a bunch of random black men who were threatening to harm you and your children due to colorism because we know black men by and large participate heavily in colorism. They champion it and tell us to be quiet even when we're victims. So the people that you were accusing, oh, she of many neck folds, you were accusing black women of targeting you, sending threats to harm you or your children, okay? So this was after she told that lie against black women. By the way, thanks so much, Giselle. Thanks so much. You know, we've been lied on by many a mangy dog and now there's you, you joined their ranks. But anyway, so this was after that. And then Karen tried to get them to talk when they were all sitting outside. Okay. Just to add a little context. I choose not to participate in any capacity, but I believe it was my bonus children and my husband whose safety and reputation and just overall mental state were in disarray because of the things that she was saying. The answer you cannot make up lies about any person and expect not to get your ass handed to you. There was a situation in which Chris made me feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to be in this situation. This is production playing the old combo. Something. No. Right. It, he wouldn't do that. No. You sit up here with your privileged white looking ass and you think you can say whatever the you want to say and no one is going okay, to bat an eyelash. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Candace, last year I told you your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me go into a bedroom and close the door. That is what happened. She said, she said, this is recording number seven. This is in Austin. Your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me let's go back because i want y'all to hear what she said i don't want y'all to say i lied on this hooker <laughs> for my mental space and for the safety of me and my child <laughs> let's just run it back and for the safety of me and my children I choose not to participate in any capacity, but I believe it was my bonus children and my husband whose safety and reputation and just overall mental state were in disarray because of the things that she was saying. The answer is you cannot make up lies about any person and expect not to get your ass handed to you. There was a situation in which Chris made me feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't want to be in this situation. So did you do something? Did you say something? No. Right. He, he wouldn't do that. Yeah. You sit up here with your privileged, white-looking ass, and you think you can say whatever the f you want to say, and no one is going okay, to bat an eyelash. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Candace, last year I told you your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me go into a bedroom and close the door. That is what happened. Because he made me go in, into a bedroom and close the door. That is what happened. That's what she said. So this story, I want y'all to just pay attention to how this story has just gotten away from her. I, I that's, that's the only way I can put this. The story has just completely gotten away from Giselle. 
Tiger Eye Oracle, I got your email, dear. I will add you to our birthday book. Thank you, thank you. I love when my sisters be on top of stuff. Yes, Ray Ray, all day. She said a bedroom. You heard her, right? That's why I'm playing back everything this heifer says. This is what I do to people when it, when I and I'm dealing with people or even trying to deal with people who lie constantly. I will take notes. I'm meticulous as hell, and I'm not above recording. And I like that Bravo has already recorded it. So all I had all I had to do was go dig out the lies because the lies were there. All I had to do was go dig them out, honey. That was all the girl had to do. All right. So we got the one from this year at the reunion where the story again changes. It takes another turn. Nisa says, there she goes with the made me go in a bedroom again. Giselle really made it seem like Chris dragged her in the room by force. That's how she, that's exactly how she is attempting to make it sound. Right, Brandon Martin made her, honey, made her. Lying heifer. Emma Crawford said, gives it neck lying. Nobody's threatening her. Nobody, not one sister would waste her gas or time going to the she shed in the woods to run through an obstacle course to attack her in that makeshift barn that she lives in. Nobody's doing that. Just a liar. Just a liar. So let's go. Hold on. You have lied. No, I have Okay, this is where she lies again this year, swearing up and down. She didn't say what was said. Said, exactly. am I crazy? I have not lied about a thing. You, you have lied. No, no I have you're, not. You're a big ass liar. Like, We're not going to let him go. Did he force you to go? Did he force you to go? No, no. Did he force you to go? No, no. Can we ask this? Can we ask this? Am I making this up? He asked me to go. Did he force you to go? That made me feel. He knew now. This is this year's reunion. This is recording number eight. Okay, recording number eight is this year's reunion. Let's get it straight. Hey, Kiko. Recording number eight reunion this year. He knew my room was empty. You see how that's changed? I just want y'all to see how the story just be morphing and changing. Can we, am, I, am, I, am I making this up? He asked me to go. I'm he not mad. He made, that made me feel uncomfortable. Okay. She said, are you referring to the interview or confessional where she said the word made me go? No. Yes. If, if I'm misquoting, yes. please correct me. In an interview by you said, no, I didn't. made me. You the did. producer just telling did. me. No. Candace, yeah. last year I told you your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me go into a bedroom and close the door. That is what happened. So yeah. what about all the things that she tweets about? The consequences of your actions. If Giselle holds herself accountable. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. So we have now gone through. Hey, that key Marie, though. Um, say she is projecting on Chris what she wishes her fake men would do to her. Oh, child. Oh, Chile. So let's let's just go down. Let's let's go down this list, child. Let's go down this list of this ever this never ending story. Cause I find it I find it almost like nauseating. That there are people still trying to convince some of us, you know, those of us with common sense. All she said was he made her uncomfortable. We just went through. We just took our time and sat through eight audio recordings. Count them, eight. And we did this together. I was not on my own. My sister's with me. We are family. Okay, I got all my sisters with me. And we went through all eight recordings together. Did we not? Okay. Now, I told y'all to get y'all notebook and y'all pen so our notes should match because we took notes together this time, didn't we? Uh-huh. I know some of y'all didn't get y'all notebook, but I ain't calling nobody out. But I know some of y'all didn't get y'all notebook, but we finna go through these notes and we're going to look at the metamorphosis of the story. Tia Bala said, Giselle is not uncomfortable with Chris. She's been talking about that married man's penis forever, but all of a sudden she's uncomfortable because he's married. I smell a lie. Girl, scratch a, scratch a thief. Scratch a thief, find a lie. Homeland Security, kick in her door to see where she got hid over there. 
while they kicking in those and stuff, I got a few people they need to put on the list, including her, and they need to check up on the Sharice Wiggs too, see what she had. So in recording number one, she said this was the original story. Recording number one, I think, is the most important. It's the most important. This is where she claimed he slid into her DMs, though she agreed that it was an innocent conversation. She said it made her uncomfortable. She said he was waiting for me. Angie girl, thank you for being 160. She said he was waiting for me and said, can I talk to you in your room? She assumed her glam was there. She said when it when asked what was said, she claimed it was late. I, I don't know. He said something, something, Candace. I think he was complaining about Candace. I don't even know. He was very drunk. I don't want to put it be, be put in the optics of cheating. She then goes on to say, many a married man has tried me. He was trying to see if I was with it. He's a sneaky link. Okay. That's what she said. We listened to her say that. In the second recording, we heard her say, well, Chris is sliding in Ashley's DMs. Which we know from last season and even currently that was not true. That man responded to an Instagram story because people's stories are on Instagram because it's social media. So people socialize. So while he's working to the W, he tells them you and your friends instead of partying over there, y'all should have parted to the W. He responded to an Instagram story. Ashley took it, lied, said the man slid in her DM. And so G Giselle took it on herself to repeat this lie. This was after we heard Robert tell her that he did not slide in a DM, that he simply responded to an Instagram story. So she was told what the truth is, but by the second recording, she's repeating the lie, even after being told that that was not accurate, okay? She said that he's doing things to make people feel uncomfortable and he needs to, that, 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 that uh, Candace needs to know. She said she immediately felt like she didn't want to be in that situation. She said it was late. I don't remember what he said. This is when she was talking to Candace after the TikTok dancing class that Ashley had. She then said, Cal said he knew that he was leaving. Okay. That's the first time we get Cal being mentioned. Okay. Mm. Now, the third recording is Karen. When she's talking to Karen. We, hear, we see him talking to Candace, finally him to tell his side of the story, which was that he did ask to speak to her. We did see the we we saw the clip then and we heard the clip of him talking to Candace and her asking. Her asking, are you mad at him saying, I'll tell you about it later. Then we hear in her first recording that he was waiting on me as though. He already told you, I'll tell you about it later. So you knew what he was waiting to talk to you about, what went on on that stage with y'all picking with Candace and Nicki Minaj helping y'all pick on Candace and try to bully her about having a singing career and asking her about her numbers and all that, all that dumb stuff. That's neither here nor there because I'm not getting into that. But she knew what the conversation was because she tried to get in the conversation, okay? So we heard that. And then um, Cal said he knew that he was leaving. The third conversation was, the, the, okay, I'm sorry, that, that is the third conversation where he told his side, now she tells her side, where um, he said he suggested leaving the open. She never mentions that at all. Um, when she's talking to Karen, she's like, well, I didn't like it because it's his word against mine what happened in that room. And so Karen, y'all, we heard Karen ask, how did it go from, how did it get all the way to his word against yours? Y'all, he's y'all, he's your friend. Like, why would he say anything about you? So she was like, well, did you tell him you were uncomfortable? I asked him to see if they were ready for us to come back out there and he left immediately. Still, we haven't heard. Now, by the time, notice y'all, by the time we get to the third recording, all that extra sauce dropped off. All the extra sauce dropped off. Vic got her crown back. All right, sis. Um, so we get to the fourth recording. This is her talking to Candace on the deck or patio at the winery while they were alone. She said, Candace um, was like, I just want to be clear about what happened, yada, yada, yada. And you know why you were uncomfortable. Giselle says, I was in a room with a man who does not belong to me. 
I asked him to go outside and he left immediately. Does that sound like the same story we heard in the first or second recording at all? Because it doesn't sound like the same story to me. I was in a room with a man that don't belong to me and I asked him to go outside and he left immediately. So because he stood in the room, you felt, you know, we, we covered that, but it doesn't make sense. Candace then let, lets her know that Chris said that he asked if y'all should the door open and notice. I want y'all to notice this. This is so important. Giselle says, I don't remember him saying that, but if he did, then that means he knew it was inappropriate. By the time they got to the reunion, the first reunion, which was recording number six, and he said that he wanted that, he, that the door was left open. She that never happened. That's not true. That's not true, Chris. That's that never happened. But way back in recording number five, four, no, four, when you were talking to Candace, you said you didn't remember. So is it that you didn't remember, or is it didn't happen, Chris? That's not true. So which one is true, Giselle? Did it happen and you don't remember? Or are you absolutely clear now about all the details and you know for a fact that didn't happen? Because you wasn't real clear in recording number three at the, at the winery out on the patio when you were talking to Candace. That wasn't very clear at all. I was like, I don't know. I really don't even remember. I don't know. But if he did, that means he knew something was inappropriate. What's inappropriate? That sounds to me like that sounds to me like someone who was trying to make sure that everything was appropriate. That doesn't sound like somebody being inappropriate. Sounds like somebody going out of their way to make sure that everything's appropriate. Okay, Giselle, let's keep going. Recording number five on the Sprinter bus. This is where we get you again. Now, the first time she used Ashley's story was in recording number two by recording number five on the Sprinter bus leaving the winery. When she entered the Sprinter, she decides to take Ashley's story about her ugly friend and add to it that, oh, yeah, Ashley say her friend said that Chris propositioned her at the bar and was feeling on her butt. I never accused him of SA. You just said he propositioned a woman at that bar, at a bar, at a spring fling party, and was feeling on her butt. Madam, that sounds very much like SA. Emma say, when you lie, you can't keep your lies straight. Apparently, that's true. I think this may be proof that that's true. Okay? It may be proof. Recording number six. The first reunion, which was last year. Not the first reunion, but the first reunion that this was a topic. So this was last year, season seven reunion. Okay? She said, I only said yes because I thought that the team was there. Okay? He asked, why not say we'll talk later or we'll talk in the hallway and we listen to her strategically not answer that question at all she simply refused to answer that question went back to the rehearsed lie about what happened that day she would not answer why she didn't just say let's talk in the hallway or we'll talk later okay now randa says giselle's accusation exposes the issue i have with the me too movement accusation should not be believed they should be taken seriously and be thoroughly investigated. I agree with that 100%. 100. Can, is there anything like 1,000% like the girls who saw Maury Povich? 1,000%, okay? Because that's what them girls said on Maury. I agree. W.D. Rose said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. You better say that. Because my memory bad. But if you ask me what happened, I'm going to tell it the same every time. Bet say, and she said that herself. I don't remember Ashley or Deborah saying he felt her butt. That's so dangerous and is S.A. Yes, it is. But all of a sudden now, I never accused him of S.A. And you got people online just with a Negro intentionally pretending not to remember what this woman said. Tiger Eye Oracle said Ashley doesn't want her husband to be the only creep on the show. Giselle agreed to help on that mission because they both don't like Candace. And do not forget, Giselle was trying to kill two birds with one stone by helping her masculine friend Robert hide Juan's mess at Motel Motel Holiday Inn. If your girl start acting up, then you take her friend. Okay, now that's what happened. All right. 
ran to say people's lives have been upended and destroyed over accusations that have later been disproven. Right. Now in the age of social media, lies are more dangerous because lies, number one, lies have always traveled fast. Lies have always traveled super, super fast. Okay. But now due to social media, lies have a way of taking on a life of their own and being repeated, reposted, put in blogs, so much so that people will take it as proof. People will go and get a blog post that the blog post will, will literally be someone retelling a rumor, but they will use that blog post as an evidence of fact. So telling lies now are extremely dangerous. Emma say Grover and Miss Piggy on, on Sesame, Sesame Street are lying. They are. They are. Say so tell tell these delusional stands that baby the stands won't listen. That's why they're stands because they're not right in the head. They're not okay. Because mm -mm. if you were okay in the head, you wouldn't be a stand. But listen, so she didn't ask. She didn't answer the question about why you know why not say we'll talk later or we'll talk in the hallway. He asked, "What did I do?" She said, "All the only thing she came up with was you said, can we talk?" And you told your you told your wife that I asked you to go to my room, and that's not true. What did he do to you to make you uncomfortable? She literally talked about everything but that. When they pinned her down, all she could say was, I felt like you had a lot to drink. And Cal said, she said that Cal said that you knew very well that he was gone. And, and basically, the, the, so she's taking that to say that, um, yes, baby, in just a minute. Um, I see your prognosis. And basically to say that he knew the room was empty. He didn't know anything about your room and glam squad strategy and none of that. You did. You had control, complete control, start to finish. And somehow you didn't exercise it until he ran away from you. And then you became uncomfortable. Um, and we and we heard Cal's recording. Cal did not say, oh, he knew very well that you was going to be alone, child. No, what we heard Cal say, apparently she didn't tell Cal what script to read from because what Cal said was, I said bye to Chris and Chris said bye Cal. And for you to feel that uncomfortable is a major issue for me. That's what was said. Then she says, I felt like you participated in a situation that made me uncomfortable. He participated by speaking to you, by responding to you by asking to have a conversation because you asked if he was upset. So he assumed that you wanted to know. So how did he participate and what exactly made you, which part made you uncomfortable? I think that's the question they should have asked her, which part of this exchange made you uncomfortable? Because you said you don't even remember what he said. So nothing he said must've been memorable enough to make you uncomfortable. Was it that he spoke to you that made you uncomfortable? Cause he spoke to you before. Was it that when you said, go see if they're ready for me, that he ran out of the room? Were you uncomfortable then? Did you think he was saying that you smelled? Like, what made you uncomfortable? Which part did he participate in? She gave nothing. The seventh recording is this year, this season, season eight in Austin, on an Austin trip. We heard Giselle say, your husband made me feel uncomfortable because he made me go in a bedroom and close the door. That's what happened made me go in a bedroom and close the door that man ain't made you do a goddamn thing according to you in recordings one through six he asked you if he could if y'all could talk according to you you claim he said can we step in your room and talk you said yes you were uncomfortable you asked him to leave and he left when did he make you recording eight was this year's reunion season eight reunion he knew my room was empty he asked me to go that made me feel uncomfortable. And then when Candace, she kept trying to yell over Candace so Candace couldn't get her question off. You said he made you go. Andy had to tell her. Karen had to tell her. Production had to tell her. You said it. Not your twins, mama. Thank you for the super chat, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always get to the facts. I don't play. Y'all know that. Couture Bay say Giselle is dangerous. And this is why I want to see receipts. S.A. isn't a joke. It is not. It is not. Too many women have actually suffered SA from some filthy, out of control, violent, dastardly man. For women like Giselle to make up these stories and blurt them out like it's child's play. This is not like little kids on a playground saying, who farted? It was you. You smelt it. You dealt it. 
No, this is a big accusation. It's a big one. So when you say it, you need to be telling the truth and not playing with words, not playing semantics. And dare I say, you should not play word games when your vocabulary is limited. I'm just saying I'm not accusing anyone. And then after they pin her down, it was like, you did say that. And she's like, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And they literally had to tell her production is saying that they got it like you said it. And she never even apologized for that lie. She just told it. So this is the evolution of Giselle's lies. The lie had just evolved. The lie took on a life of its own. I don't know whether to, I don't know whether to call it Darwinism, like was the lie evolving so that it could live? What caused the morphing, the metamorphosis of Giselle's lie? Now I can we can get down to what she said, when she said it, what scene, chapter, verse, but to be able to actually say why this heifer lied, it might take a while. It might well take a while. Now let me tell, let me let y'all hear something else. That is, I think. Hold on. I hate when my phone takes it on itself to update something when no one asked you. Like literally nobody asked you. I know I didn't. I absolutely don't like that. Here it is. I want y'all to hear something because now y'all y'all recall. Y'all do recall. They were trying to make such a big deal. Because Candace said that this woman set her white looking tail up there telling lies because she felt like nobody would bat an eyelash. I didn't feel like that was so ridiculous because that's really on point and it's on brand for exactly what Giselle is doing. She's fully aware that there are people who are disgusting enough that because she has a, a, a much closer proximity to whiteness that she's automatically going to be seen as a victim and she's automatically going to be believed if she says that someone tried to attack her just like i believe she feels like people will automatically believe that she's receiving death threats from us angry negroes or us angry negresses we're just out threatening to harm her and her babies but i just want to point out Oh, Auntie Eva gifted a membership. Thank you, Auntie Eva. Somebody better grab it. Somebody better grab it. So now I want y'all to hear something that's very interesting because, yes, more audio, because Candace wasn't the first person to point out that not just Giselle, but Giselle and Robin look extremely European. And where was this outrage? Or is it only outrage when a black girl says? Hey, Lily, how you doing, gorgeous? Well, let's get on into it, shall we? Y'all know I, I love to get into it. So let's just get into it. Yes, we shall. Where is this video? Okay, here we go. My hair is red. My hair has been black. So this is um Ashley and Katie dealing with Giselle and Robin. Listen. Now. Blonde hair. Are they trying to be white? Come on. But, you, but they, don't, they don't preach about being black all the time. They don't have to preach, preach, preach about it. Just Nobody. let people live. Now, you maybe could get away with being fucking I could, but I don't. Well, because okay, so I'm what black. Do you to say? I'm black. Uh, what, uh, I okay. All right. I want to ask Ashley your opinion. You're, you're biracial. What was your reaction to all this? I was just really surprised because the two women who have the most European features seem to make the biggest deal of race. When most of us embrace our naturalness, for some reason, they don't. What? Huh? My case is as wide as my backside and I rest it. The two people with the most European features make the biggest deal about being black. <laughs> Where was the outrage, y'all? Why wasn't nobody shaking the table? Because hmm? Ashley, Ashley got both of them, like double homicide, both of them. So explain to me, where was all this outrage? Where was this outrage, sugar? Where is that? <laughs> Let me know. Let me know, because I, I missed it. I ain't seen no outrage while, while I'm digging. 
But then when 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 it says that colorism is absolutely an issue, not just with the cast, but with the fan base, people want to pretend. We're gonna pretend like it's just, you know, that she pulled that out of thin air. It's not accurate at all. That never happens. Remember last year reunion, they were talking about colorism. Ashley had to pull the teeth out of the back of her mouth to finally say she acknowledged her privilege, but pretending not to understand that this girl is saying that she is received and treated completely different based on her complexion. You two are the ones with the most European features. Mm. Yeah, they definitely have selective memory. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't, my memory is pretty decent with some gossip. Now, I can usually keep it straight. Oh, I definitely got a notebook somewhere. I got a notebook somewhere with something in it. Okay, so, yeah, so th there's that. I'm going to go ahead and put the screen out in the chat because this part is just hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> oh. Oh, how I love, I love how silly I am. I love how funny I am. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to put the stream y'all in here while I go through these tweets, y'all, of necrosis trying to play victim and failing miserably. And the reason I say she's failing miserably is because you people on social media, Y'all have chewed this child up and spit her out like Bazooka Joe Bubblegum. Big League Chew. Hubba Bubba. Y'all out of control. Mm, mm, mm. This child here. She had so much to say. So much to say. Polar Damien. Mmm. Oh, man. <laughs> mm, I'm trying to see where to start. Mm. Okay, so let's start here. Let's start here. Okay, this the, let's start with the one where she couldn't spell ostracized, y'all. This thing is too funny. Okay, Ian say Ashley act like she didn't know what colorism was, but she definitely knew what texturism was when Giselle said something about her nappy hair on season one. Sure did. She knew all about it then. But child, you know, people become intentionally obtuse. Girl, the viewers ate her up. Y'all did that because it wasn't me. I didn't say one word to that girl. I did not me. I can prove it. So this is what she said. This is what her post she put on here. This is the one where she's misspelling words and misusing them, child. It's too funny. But I joined the cast. It was extremely fractured. People think I'm a GEB puppet, but no one considered that they accepted me when someone contaminated me <laughs> from the other side. <laughs> oh, my God. Hated on me. Austericized me. Oh Lord, austericized me and judged me due to my financial status, education, and upbringing. Okay. I'm so confused. I'm just like, how did that? Who contaminated you? Who contaminated? When did you throw something on this girl? Now, listen, I'm going to switch sides. Did you throw something on this girl? Contaminated you, baby. Austericized and say judged her due to her financial status, education, and upbringing. I'm trying to understand what is this financial status with the no appliances, honey? And you got you you got a degree or two. When they got four, so why would she be you know judge you based on that? Are you saying she looked down on you because you didn't have enough degrees? Is that what you're saying? And then uh, your upbringing. What about your upbringing? Your brother that got that outside child in the street that he ain't raising that's down there in Louisiana? Let me shut up talking about people business. But I'm just saying, girl, which upbringing in Beloit, Wisconsin that you lying talking about you was in L.A.? Is that the one? So anyway, y'all, the people, let me tell you about the people. Bet she didn't have spell check. 
She didn't have grammar check. She didn't have punctuation check. The, the commas was just scattered in there. Like she said, sprinkle, sprinkle, baby. She didn't put them, she did not put them anywhere that they should be. Okay. <laughs> Listen. The first comment, I didn't even have to go far, y'all. First comment under this girl says, Nick, how could Wendy have ostracized you from women that don't like her? Please be serious. This one says, at, they adding her too, y'all. Girl, stop lying. You needed a storyline to get on the show so you slithered your way in by coming for your fellow African sister. Take several seats. You're a pick me. Someone else simply said, girl, please. This person is out, is a person after my own heart, okay? This person says, they eating you up in the quotes. They, are eat, they were eating her up in these quote tweets, y'all. Girl... This one say, girl, none of that happened. The GEBs took you under their wing to spite Wendy. This one just says, shut up. I My feelings get hurt. When everybody else is writing jokes and comments and somebody just come in and say, shut up, I, my feelings be hurt. Mm -hmm. Lord. This one says, how could Wendy ostracize you from a group of women she ain't cool with? If anything, you have further ostracized her when you decided to have a sit down with Robin about Wendy's mother instead of going to Wendy directly and then posted a gift that said, give it a rest. Mm. This one said, girl, stop. You spent all season one Wendy to apologize for something for something that was hearsay. My cousin, best friend, sister said that Wendy's mom does did voodoo on me. WTF. Stop. You saw how fractured the group was and you came in doubling down on trying to ice out Wendy Osefo. That's true. Oh, child. This one say you allowed them to use you to further perpetuate stereotypes of your culture and this is what you call accepting. They have footage of you hating on Wendy, not the other way around. It seemed like you were constantly begging for her acceptance. Child, don't start. Listen, y'all rough on social media. Remind me not to never step on nobody's toes because y'all better not do me like this. Nisi, Nisi Rose, thank you for the super sticker, sis. I appreciate the support all the way from Canada. So listen, somebody corrected her spelling of ostracized and then said, and they didn't accept you. Watch this not age well. All the things you accusing Wendy of, you did. Mm. This one say, correct me if I'm wrong. But wasn't it Ashley who actually contaminated you and put contaminated in quotation in a quotation marks, y'all? Contaminated you. And wasn't it because of what Ashley told Wendy that Wendy actually started to have a problem with you? Was. I can't go on because I'll be here all night. I'll be here all night. Like this girl had no support. Y'all chewed her up in these quote tweets. I mean, they chewed her alive. Y'all, here she go again with another um, victim quote, victim tweet. Unfa unfairly, somebody said that she was treated unfairly. She goes, unfairly isn't the word. The way I was abused, dehumanized, defamed, mischaracterized, as for sharing. As for sharing? This hoe ain't no lawyer. This hoe ain't no lawyer. I'm going to just put that out there. This hoe ain't no lawyer. If she passed the bar, I want to see CCTV footage of who went in and took the test. This hoe ain't no lawyer. The way I was abused, dehumanized, defamed, mischaracterized, asked for sharing what happened to me. No commas, no nothing. She did not run up no commas, baby, because she didn't use one. I would never understand, but God is always good. Girl, don't bring God into your mess. The, the people started just, you know, tearing her up again. They said, we heard enough of you trying to play the victim, please. Um, Got to give, tell her to shut up. This one say, girl, bye. This one say, it's how you came on the show making false allegations. I started liking you at the end. The whole Wendy and her mom thing still makes me cringe. This one says, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's so funny. And with a laughing emoji. This one say, girl, are you for real though? 
okay, let's give you the benefit of the doubt that you were in the crux of it and didn't notice, but you yourself didn't even watch the season. Did you yourself even watch the season? Now, wow, the deflection is real. It is, it is, and I agree. Prognosis, what you got on this mess? Prognosis. Prognosis. I'm sorry. I was having a hard time with the um, uh, mic button. But I just think that it is disingenuous and intellectually dishonest. And I like to watch things that are entertaining within reason and mm. all that. And the fact that they play in my face is like unreasonable for me. That's when I spend time with my nieces and my nephews and my godchildren, okay? I don't do this on real, like real life. The Even like the white ladies don't even take it. Giselle, I feel like has taken Bravo on a whole nother level of not being held accountable because I watched I'm not new to this housewife stuff I'm true to this I was a child going to college when my mama was watching my Senegalese mama was watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills New York people with money long money long 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 money and she was teaching me like hey 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 you see this long crazy white lady money you need to understand that this comes with a liability. You can't just say anything. You can't just do anything. And then I sit here. And the fashions are fine. No money. And then you lie. And you malign. And you take it to this point that to me, is no longer even entertaining, right? It's no longer something that we can always just like giggle and cackle like, girl, can you believe Candace Mama still paying for a townhouse? Like my mama would have been stop paying for that townhouse. Like, you know, things like that that should be shared within this specific group of wealth or lifestyle. Now, now that it's coming to like African stuff and weird things, I am just, I don't even have words to say how shocked and surprised I am that it's even going on. No, Nisha, and because I'm not I listen to you as an elder. These are, these are peanuts. These, Sorry, can I, hold on, let me see, let me see. Maybe I can't, maybe it's not, hold on. Because I can't hear you. And I want to hear what you have to say. Because why is my Are you on your phone? Okay, let me get out and come back in. Because uh -huh. I can hear you. She'll come back. Nisha talking about there's somebody drinking. I'm not drinking. These are peanuts. This some peanuts. Because I was sitting listening to her talk. And throwing me some peanuts in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Because if I if I eat a few like a handful of peanuts, it helps me to drink more water. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so yes, NECA, necrosis, necropolis, all those names, honey. She is on there. Oh, Nisha. Hey, Malaya Lachelle, thank you for being like number 181. Okay, prognosis, can you hear me now? Prognosis. Sis? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. We can hear oh you. Oh my before. gosh, I'm so sorry. I was 
talking a lot and I just want to apologize if everybody can hear me earlier on because I heard you when you were on you were up here before we could hear you but you couldn't hear me and then when you just came back you were like it was like a lot of dead air it was really quiet and then you started talking so we hear you now okay I apologize if I might have said or like interrupted or anything or you know, spoke before anything. Mm -mm. No, I was just letting you talk, baby. I, I grabbed me a handful of peanuts and drank <laughs> me some water. Okay, because I I just felt away and it's it's so disappointing that I, I don't want to be what I saw in Candace. And again, I'm an older lady. I consider myself an auntie and a grandma, really, because I'm 36. And oh, girl, I'm you still a baby. No, but how, how did you become a grandma? Ain't no if you no. If, if you can be a oh, grandma no. at 36, that means Let you were fast you. as hell okay, and your okay. child is fast as hell. Can I be honest? And I don't like to use the word fast, but yes. My best friend had a child in the eighth grade and her child had a child and that was my sister, cousin, friend, and that was my niece, cousin, whatever. And she has a 16 year old now. So to but me- This is what I'm trying to tell you, baby. That's not normal. Just so you I know, know. No, 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 Wait, so you not, no. So you not, no, I'm just making it clear. You I not, know. you not auntie okay. age. You not no. you not grandma age. The rest of I us in here, the rest but of I us in here, we, this we is what, listen. But this is what I learned from you. <laughs> but this is what I learned from you that makes me rever you like my mother is because you made me not look at that girl that I was friends with wrong. You made me your not you, but your energy and my mom's energy made me not like um look at that girl wrong i know it's not normal which is why i didn't do it but i yeah. also respected her and gave her that space because she didn't have my mom people don't have you either. so that's what i'm saying like that's why i love you because you're like my mom on the internet like hey 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 things happen okay. People grow and it might not be your child. And my mom saw that in my friends. And instead of being like, oh, you can't be friends with her. Oh, she too fast. Or oh, her mama not around. My mom would bring my friends around, give them space. You know what I mean? Like show them things. And then they were they, they were exposed to other stuff. So just the exposure mm -hmm. and the conversation of yeah, she might be quote unquote fast within her region, but she's not naturally fast. So well, let me <laughs> ask you this though. Let me ask you this. What do you make of Giselle's lie and the way it just transformed through eight different recordings? What what, what did you make of that? Because we all sat through that. She's a white lady. She's the woman that my mama taught me about that was like a secret. It wasn't even a snake. She would call it a scorpion. So we're Scorpios. So she would call it a scorpion. Someone that the way that we would look at ourselves, someone that doesn't see it happening, but is disingenuous and plans everything around them. So Giselle is nothing new to me. Giselle is the old school woman that I grew around with, with my gen my mama, my generation X, awesome ass aunties that raised me into being the woman that I am and loving other women. women. It's a different perspective when you understand who Giselle is and where she comes from. And that that type of woman, that light mm. skin, all that, that's, a, that's deeper. It's deeper than just, oh, it's someone to be scared of. No. Right. Brian, well, wait. Brian Patterson, thank you for the super chat. He said, congratulations on 5K, 10K coming soon. I know that's right. I'm claiming that. Thank you so much. Christina with the T, thank you for being like number 191. I appreciate you so much. But it was just, like I said, I had to break that down 
Yeah, because you there was, so. there was no do. way that I was going to let that go because I saw way too many people on social media with selective memory, with selective amnesia, and basically saying, oh, all she did was say he made her uncomfortable. And so we had to go all the way back down memory lane, recording mm -hmm. by recording, all eight of them, so that we could take notes and detail exactly what this woman said because she did not just say he made me uncomfortable mm -hmm. like the things mm -hmm. that dropped off of that off of that original story were insane she she dropped off and people conveniently forgot oh he slides in my dms and that made me uncomfortable she dropped off the sneaky link she dropped off that he was complaining about candace he was trying to see if i was with it he was complaining about her to, to see if i was going to say oh it, it, he was he wasn't happy and he was trying to see if I was going to say, I can make you happy. He's a sneaky man. She dropped all of that sauce off and then turned it into, he knew my room was empty. He asked me to go and, and I was not comfortable. And still yet, how did he know your room was empty? How? How? Like this lady's lies are absolutely heinous. They are inexcusable and they are heinous. And Absolutely. I had to break that down, and it was it was driving me Absolutely. watching people tell lies to try to cover for Miss Millie. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Because they play in our faces when we know absolutely what she's doing. Giselle knows what she's doing. And then it's it's to sit in our grown faces and say, no, 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 no. That's not what's going on. That is a dangerous person to be around. Fam, yep, she is. mama, oh. auntie, cousin. No, people that lie straight to your face like that is very no dangerous. Regard, they're no, no. But they're now, stupid. look at what Frenchie is saying. Frenchie, you right, girl. French, Frenchie, you right. Because Nec Necrosis did say she expect them to ask her about them. They don't ask and blah, blah, blah. But she said she expect her friends to interrogate her about her marriage. LOL, her wish will be granted. Right. If she comes back, they're going to definitely question her about that stuff, about anything they can think of. They're going to throw stuff in that's not included, that, that she never said. They're going to throw in things that they've never heard. And when they finish, they're going to turn him into somebody that's either cheating on her or, or looking at one of them. It's going to be one of the two. And they're going to paint this picture of this out of control African man who cannot control himself around these yellow pawpaw. That's going to be the story that's going to come out with this man if they keep going. Or they're going to talk about the, oh, he's cheating. Or the women, the, the young girls over at University of Maryland, they're saying that he's taking necrosis' money and buying coochie. Or they're going to bring up the stories that popped oh out with goodness. all the young gentlemen who are saying that he cruises from time to time and he, he could be considered trade. All of those things are going to come out. All of the rumors are going to come out about her husband. It's far too many. Zoe, you told me, baby. Happy birthday. Brandon Martin said, Nitra Giselle is dumb enough to stay on this show for the whole world to see karma come get her. I'll wait. You ain't lying, baby, because father time got a way of picking your pockets. Emma say, um, Gizzard Nick, we are not comfortable with you. Yeah, we're not comfortable with people telling those kind of dangerous lies. The only upside is that she did not tell a lie like that on one of the black husbands. Thank you, Jesus. But I don't put it past her, and I believe she absolutely would if given the opportunity. Destiny says, I've met women like Giselle a time or two in my life, and they come in all shades. Pun intended. I know that's right. Not sure what inspired her to be so bold. This go round, she lied, made her apologize, and laughed at her. Sure did. Sure did. Auntie Eva said there really needs to be consequences for what Nick has done. But there won't be. There won't be. You say Grizzle will meet her karma. I think she's met it in a lot of ways already, if we're being honest. I mean, look at her life. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Your children are embarrassed. And I don't blame them. You live in a you live in the cabin in the woods, oh my obstacle God. course and all. You look a mess, and you're on a TV show where you have to lie for a living because you're so afraid of losing that check because you have no other prospects. You have no talent, baby, and ain't nobody coming to marry you. 
that's pretty bad. Nisha, thank you for the super chat. She says Giselle has spent her whole life resting on her looks and privilege. Sadly, she's the product of having no other substance or value. Very true. Because dare I say, um, looks fade, and that so-called privilege isn't much value. It's really not. It'll it'll only get you far with people who are extremely low class. Lord, Randa, Randa said Nanek, Naneka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the typical season. Oh my God, I gotta mute myself. Hold on. Just I like Wendy did. <laughs> yeah, not NECA, honey. Not NECA. I like that one. I'm just saying. And DS says, in the words of Judge Judy, beauty fades, but dumb is forever. Yes. Yes. Big fool. Big fool. Not her ankles, it's her karma. Malaya says, she can't dress. She got to rent a man. Naked, saggy, and can't count to 20. Baby, listen. That's a blues song right there. That's a whole blues song. Maybe even a country song. Somebody called Benazi. She can do something with that. She'll turn it into a whole country album. Just like that. Because that's depressing. The only thing you left out is that her dog left. Did her dog leave too? Because that's the only thing missing. But listen, y'all. That's all I got for this. I'm not going to stay here all night long. We've done two hours. And that was two hours longer than I meant to do, but we had to break down the lives of that large legged heifer. We had to. Oh God. Well, I've been on mute laughing so hard because y'all are really going hard and <laughs> well deserved. But I appreciate you, Diva. And oh, God. I'll, thank I'll, you for coming up to holler at us, prognosis. I appreciate you. You too. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, that child is funny. So listen, y'all, we're going to go because it's been two hours. We done broke everything down. We done dug through the lies. Honey, Nisi said that was a thorough breakdown. Well, I did my best. I've done my best. I have not. I have not seen Aunt Anne Marie's press tour. And I'm be honest. I don't know Anne Marie like that. I see the name and the face, but I don't know those people. I really don't. I may have to pay attention to them, but you know, it pains me to pay attention to those people. I don't, I don't want to pay attention to those people. Y'all already make me watch Potomac in Atlanta. I don't know if I can do them people. Destiny say, dang, I just popped on. I know. You say you strive to be that happy and you will. And you will. All you got to do is claim it, baby. You're going to be just that happy. Listen, I appreciate you guys tonight. This was a lot of fun. Oh, she said, I can't even talk. You got me laughing so hard. Well, that's good. Laughter is good medicine. Oh, the Anne Marie girl still lying. Well, I guess I may have to see what she lying back. I don't know her. Mm. We'll see. No promises, but we'll see. So listen, guys, you know what time it is. I'm going to let y'all go. It is 9 16 Central Standard Time. So that means it's like 10 o'clock on the East Coast, but it's only like 7 o'clock in California. But either way, we in the evening. So it's going down. It's and y'all supposed to be going down to bed, okay? So we're gonna get off of here. I know people got stuff to go, stuff to do in the morning. Tennessee and Kentucky. I heard y'all got storms, so y'all be safe up there. Y'all say prayers for Tennessee and Kentucky. I appreciate you guys being here, even though y'all got storms, tornadoes, twisters, all sorts of things happening. We want y'all to be safe. Please, 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 everybody pray for them, okay? So listen, we're gonna get out of here. You know what time it is. If you didn't I hit the like button on the way in. Please, please make sure you hit the like button on the way out. The notification bell. Make sure you click all so you will know every single time that we go live on this good channel. Make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed because we're always happy to have you here. And if you want to join channel membership and put your crown atop your head, there's a join button beneath the video and a membership link in the description box. Also in the description box, we have the link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store, so you can get your own crown gear, honey. We got t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, sweatpants, water bottles, mouth pads. We even got onesies for the kids, honey. You can grab gear in our classic black and gold or our new Emerald Crown designs. We also have the link for our Amazon storefront, so we can all shop together for our home and craft needs. And my Amazon wish list in case you want to send me some snacks or goodies, pens or tablets, because y'all know I go through a lot of pens and tablets around here. Okay. So if you want to contribute to make sure your girl got stuff to write with and something to write on, 
It's going to be on my Amazon wish list. Okay. So listen, y'all enjoy the rest of your night. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate y'all being uh, allowing me to get where I've gotten and helping me celebrate today that men a lot. And listen, in case no one else says it to you, remember, God loves you. I love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. I'll talk to y'all later, okay? Bye.